Hello everyone, it's Heidi here. Uh, it's good to see you again. Uh, well, I don't know if I'm seeing you, but you're probably seeing me. So uh, yeah, it's uh, it's nice to be here back on the channel. Um, I think this video is probably going to be um, an exclusive one. Uh, a very, I don't know if it's going to be a boring to you or it's going to be a uh, really really good video. Uh, so anyway. I'm, start, I'm I'm actually doing this something, well doing this, I uh, haven't done this for, uh, I haven't done this before, um, whereas usually I do things or I video myself about what I have done, but not necessarily how I have done it. And uh, today uh, we are discussing things about the Kronos and uh, what's been going on on it. Um, I have been, I wouldn't say drifted, but I have a lot of interest on the OMAP uh, or the Texas Instrument Technology, whereas we did a lot of videos on the on the OMAP series and uh, the OM, um, well the OMAP and the AM5728. I haven't done much on it yet, and to be honest with you, since the last uh, OMAP video, I've not done uh, anything on, on the OMAP side. Uh, I have been pretty much busy uh, with, with my life. Uh, a lot of things happened uh, since then. Um, the I think for four weeks I've had a well, it was meant to be two weeks project, uh, quick projects. So I've done I've done a, I've done it in, in in two weeks, but then it was uh, it was another 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 two weeks additional to that. So anyway, I've spent four weeks on that, uh, pretty much hidden away from everything. Then, um, I think uh, a week ago, about Friday, I started to work on the Chronos again. I think, um, well, to be honest with you, thank you very much for your comments. It's nice. Uh, I, will, I, like, I like these comments a lot. And uh, to some as well, uh, <laughs> it's quite funny to say, uh, some people um, believe that my channel is, is the Chronos channel. It's not. It's a Hydro Sati channel, which ranges from Hydro Sati cooking a, a fried egg. Uh, on, on, on YouTube and to Hydrosati doing a rocket science, so I don't know, well, 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 you pick something. So it's it's the channel about me, it's not about um, you know something particular, it's about what I do in my life and uh, at the moment I'm interested in the working on this this, this thing. Uh, so today's video is just going to stop talking about things. Uh, the reason I'm doing this video in particular about what or how am I doing things, just to give you a glimpse of of how things are happening in my life is because um, I've got well let's just to talk about little things sorry to bore you up with I, I know many people not really interested in this talk but just to before we start doing this thing um, back in 2018 I had a, uh, a tumor in my head and uh, that was a 14 hour operation and uh, I came out as you can see successful I lost hearing on my uh, left side. Uh, yeah, I mean, I've, I've well some controls and stuff, but it's fine. I'm, I'm I survived it. And uh, tomorrow, which is Saturday, the first of October, two thousand and twenty-two, I am attending another surgery tomorrow. And uh, I do hope to come out of it and see you guys soon and then continue videos. But you never know. So this video is going to be something that uh, you know. Some of you might like, some of you might think it's really good, uh, others might think it's too advanced, but uh, I think it will show uh, how things are going to go and what, uh, you know, what, uh, my, I think it's probably going to generate interest on what I do. So what I mean by that is uh, engineering, reverse engineering, debugging, that sort of thing, and to come up uh, in, in, into doing your own stuff maybe someday. But anyway. Um, back onto the subject. So now the subject is to talk about the Kronos, and um, I have done a lot since Friday, um, and I'm gonna start working on this thing now, and I'll, uh, we'll, we'll we'll pick it up from there. But uh, yeah, uh, I think um, let's do this. <laughs> right. Okay. So uh, hello on this camera now, uh, and I hope. You can see me on that one as well. So here is the other camera as well, and here is the other camera as well. So, 
uh, let's power up. The point is, I would like to make sure that this video, which I'm pointing at, you should hopefully see um, my screen, and this video you should see my, uh, you know, because I'm worth it to face. <laughs> Right, so, um, first things first, I want to take you to what has been done so far and uh, discuss, this video basically is about the progress that I've done so far. So now, this is the, when you bought the Kronos, you'd actually see, you would, no, you would not see that screen because I've got a keyboard and a, and a VJ connected to it. But this is basically when the system starts, it would, um, you know, go into the the Kronos OS, which is this one, and you would obviously not see that anywhere in, in, in your screens. But this is basically what uh, how it boots up. I hope that you guys can see this text on the screen. That's why I have two cameras in here today, because I do want to show you the screens, both of them, at the same time. So uh, yeah, uh, let's let's do this. Right, so, when you first power up the system, uh, you would not get that prompt, but I do. Um, now, the Kronos should start, but it's not starting, because I've actually told the system to break it in the middle, uh, and not to, uh, well, just to wait for me to do something. So, to begin with, I will, uh, to begin, before we begin with anything, if you do... do a to check the file system uh, this is a raw file system it's broken in the middle it's not mounted there's nothing it's just a virgin system it's got nothing on it so when the system start it would do so now we mount in the file system so this is all basically oh sorry uh, I did the, did the other one around sorry uh, I'll, uh, I'll repeat that's not the right way by the way, none of that stuff has been rehearsed or anything like that. I don't rehearse my stuff, and to be honest with you, I should I should really do live live videos at some point. Um, nothing that broken. No, it didn't. Should break, come on. Yep. Yeah. Right, okay. Well, that stuff that happened just now, I booted, uh, it's fine, but I actually went into the wrong file. It's a different thing, it's just something I created. So anyway, just to talk about this, I split the startup system into two different files, uh, two scripts. One would load map the file system, and the other one would load the whole system up. And uh, it's this is usually how it starts. Uh, you know, when you start the system, it will uh, it will load the script and load everything in one go. But I like to break it down in the middle and then uh, do the loading manually myself. So as you can see, now we are on the uh, we are on the prompt. So, so this is the system uh, mounting thing. So now we have mounted the system, and if I do, if I do the mount, I get the stuff, which is the normal things. Uh, you know, the dev root, the proc, the sys, the proc, bus, USB, the SDA5, and the SDA6. All that stuff is mounted. Um, the thing is when. If I run, if I run the RC like this, it will load the sequence up, and what will it do? It will run the file that will power everything up, and then this whole thing will will come up uh, on the Chrono screen. So the currently Chrono screen is actually saying, I'm you know, sat the failed whatever it is, um, and this is the bit that I think you're probably going to start generating interest and. Uh, you know, you guys might like what, what I've done so far. So, um, if I if I were to begin with this, um, 
Now I have the operating system like that. And if I do in this in smart is where you install a module and the module will uh, is, is a is a is a like in, in Windows is actually like a device driver. It sits in the background uh, and then does its thing and then whoever wants to talk to it will talk to it. But this is the device driver is, is is not easy to debug by people usually because it's a device driver, as simple as that. Just turn that a little bit like this. Yeah, no, I can I can rest on my thing. <laughs> anyway, yeah, so in smart uh, and then we do a uh, user real time modules RTI HAL. So um, the Coros uses something called the real time AI. Oh, sorry, real-time uh, application interface, or RTI. And this is basically a... Um, I'm not going to talk about RTI, it's not our concept, in, it's not our, uh, out of the scope of this video, but RTI basically is a real-time processing system, and it just does a lot of interrupts, a lot of things to do fast processing in, in, in real-time. And uh, the, you can read about it, it's a, it's a built-in system. So initially, when you load the system up, you would start RTI HAL, and as you can see, that's step step one, and then RTI scheduler. HAL is the uh, the devices. Uh, the scheduler you got there next, uh, and then you've got the first the FIFOs, first and first out the queues, and that's loaded, and this guy here, the NDVG, that's not uh, an RTI, uh, well, Korg decided, or Kronos decided to, or Korg decided to call it RTI underscore NDVG, but it's something nothing to do with, it doesn't come with RTI, this is something they created to trap, or to track into interfaces, and we'll come to that later on in a minute, but uh, just, let's load this up now. So the RTI is done, and then the last thing is the semaphore, and that's all loaded. So real-time interface is now fully loaded. And I think none of you in the past have seen the loading sequence in action, how, how, how it loads manually things. So the next bit is uh, the SDG enabler. Now, they're calling it the SDG enabler, but to be honest with you, when I looked inside the, the, the looked inside of it, a lot, if not all, well, pretty much, let's say a lot of its functions are just decoys. So basically, for example, when something wants it to register a USB device, um, the the application or the Chronos will call SDG underscore register device, for example. But then the SDG it will look at the function and say, ah, oh, actually, I'm not dealing with this. Here you go. Do the standard original USB register device. So, in essence, the application can technically go call the original register device as opposed to SDG on the storage device. And a lot of that function, or these functions, exist in the SDG enabler. I don't know what they call the enabler because I think probably either they have things for expansion or future expansions or they just don't want you to install uh, things uh, on the system that directly unless the loader does that and talk to SCG enabler to enable the thing for you. So anyway, that's, uh, that's all powered up. Now the next bit is what a lot of people uh, pretty much stop over here and don't really have any idea where to go. Initially, if you look into code, slash uh, RL, sorry, Korg slash uh, MOD mod, EVA, and I think it was RW, and then HD and then wave motion. Where's, uh, where's, where's, wave, uh, where's wave motion gone? Uh, starter, what's the starter? Uh, Korg RW. Oh, sorry, actually. Hold on. Let's look into it. Korg, read, write, and find wave motion. 
I mean, it's not PC, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's alright. Okay. Now, uh, don't worry about that. What it is, uh, if you notice, if I look inside Korg slash uh, MOD, which is the modules, and EVA, right? They're both blank. They're both empty. There's nothing in there. Um, and basically that means uh, either uh, they will copy it later or they're going to something in Linux called mount. Mounting means you're taking something from a file system or a file base or a device, call it device, and then you're making it available to this, so you're mapping it to, to here. So when you look into the mod again, it, it suddenly the files will appear magically. And a lot of people are actually stuck in that step. They don't know what to do or how to get these things up. Now, in particular, this step of decrypting, uh, let's, let's not talk about this, let's just do something here anyway. So now, if I would go into right, if I go into Korg read only, and that's what you can see on your machine. You see, oh, there's EVA dot image, and there's mod dot image, and there's wave motion dot image. But the problem is, uh, if I look into, I don't think hex dump is in here. Yeah, it's not the other. Otherwise, we'll, we'll come to that later on. But when you look into the files and you dump them, they're all encrypted. And, um, you know, uh, that's what I mean. A lot of people don't really understand or know how to kind of map these up and then kind of open them up and then read them. Um, luckily, I did. And I honestly pretty much done this about 10 years ago. And I did discuss it on a forum and I did talk about something called OI.ko, which I could see 10 years ago. And uh, today, uh, I'm going to touch on, I'm not going to touch on the encryption, I don't want to upset people, uh, I'm just going to touch on what I did, not how I did it, on the, just the encryption side, because it's, it's, I don't want to get myself into trouble at the moment. Uh, but eventually, uh, the, 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 the point of this video is to carry on the project that I initially started, uh, well, I would say about a few months ago, and the project is to pretty much... Um, move this whole instrument from this instrument into uh, a different thing, uh, you know, whether it's going to be a, a rack mounted stuff or whether it's going to be an open source thing, you know, but at the, at the end of the day, and I said this before on uh, many replies, I'm not into decrypting licensed file uh, to bypass uh, what Korg is selling. So what I mean by that is, you know, some people buying, um, you know, call it a song or, a, you know, modules and stuff like that. And then they try to, they, they do ask me, can I break the encryption to kind of copy it? I, I, I always don't get myself into trouble today. So, no. But anyway, enough talk. Sorry, I, you know, talk too much sometimes. Uh, uh, forgive me. This is probably my last day in my life. <laughs> By the way, tomorrow is a, is a, is a, is a smaller, a much, much smaller procedure, so I should be okay. Uh, hopefully, I'll come out of it and uh, we'll do another video. Anyway, so to do this into the other bit, you need something called a, uh, well, either if you want to open up as a device, you would mount. So, for example, if I wanted to mount my uh, let's say dev slash sdb2 onto say korg slash eva uh, notice before in the past on eva it was blank but what I'm doing here my secondary hard disk which is basically just before I do the mount I have a two hard drives in this system the original which is the uh, the built in 30 I don't know what, how much 30, 30 gigabytes I think it was of 60 can't remember uh, SSD, and I've got another SSD with one terabyte inside, and I've done this also ten years ago. But the SDB2 is my second hard drive, so if I mount it like this, um, yep, Korg slash EVA, and as you can see, 
I've got some things in there. So I'm going to unmelt it. Uh, Come along, EVA. Now it's gone. So this is just a quick idea on the mounting bit. So to mount, I mount the device, which is the something under the device, which is the hard drive, hard drive which is called SCB2, and I point it down to that, and um, you know, it, it mounts and it, it does it does it nicely. So that's that's the mounting process. But for an encrypted file system like the Wave Motion image, the EVA.image, you can't mount those. So I can try that now. And if I can, if I do, for example, mount slash uh, cog ro slash uh, call it eva dot image into that it has no idea uh, well first of all it's this is not a device this is a file and to mount a file we need something called a loop device and to set up a loop device you would tell the system to start talking to a loop uh, it's called the loop because the loop is actually a, it's like a device, a virtual device driver. We'll talk to the file and the file will map itself onto the disk. So if I do uh, LO, LO setup, right? If I do minus A, I would look into whatever devices have been mapped already. So nothing in there, pretty good. And if I do LO setup slash dev slash loop zero, for example, and I would do cog slash ro slash eva. Now what that is, I have just told the system to create a loop device, which is loop zero, and mapped it to talk to the eva.image. Now if I do, uh, you know, I'll set that by to say, I get that as saying to me, now I'm actually mapped it into this one. Now with this, I can mount slash dev slash loop zero onto Cog slash RO. Okay. The problem is, as you can see, the block device, uh, Dev0 is right protected, mounted read only, invalid file system, blah 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 blah. I can't read it. I just can't do anything with it. And this is what people don't understand uh, or have not seen before. Uh, it's an encrypted file system. You can't load it like this. It's not going to work. Uh, you have neither to read this, you have to decrypt it. Um, use some things which will come to that in a minute but not to decrypt the file I just wanted to show you take a glimpse of the reverse engineering process um, so now that's no that's a dead end I can't map the system if I try to read uh, cog EVA there's nothing in there so just for safety unmount sorry unmount you mount Called EVA. That's not there. Good. And if I allow setup, sorry, has been hello setup minus D dev loop zero and hello setup minus A and it's gone. Minus D means deleted. I don't want it there. So in either so all that stuff I talked about, that comes with the original system. It's all encrypted, you can't mount it, you can't do much with it, you don't know the password. And by the way, because the system is compiled by Korg, um, when, when Korg ships the operating system files, or the SRC and the SRC on the DVD, Korg DVD, they include the operating system to compile it again. But what they don't include is the config file, which is a the, the 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 main ingredient to configure the system to make it work with whatever we want to do to, to get it to work, and um, the encryption itself. The encryption is also another module being developed. Well, not a module. It was actually a, a built-in uh, developed into the system. I actually had a look into it. It's interesting, um, but that's we're not going to go into the encryption now. But I'm, I'll just take you through straight away to the decrypted files. So, if I were to go into uh, wait, what am I? So,
The problem with the system, by the way, if I do a df minus m just out of interest, notice that the the system is seventy eight percent, and Cog does that intentionally, so that in case he's trying to copy something into the system, to for example tools to the crypto or tools to the compile, it will fill up the hard drive straight away, and it's done intentionally to stop you from from doing that. So mounting is the is the way to go. Um, so let's look into this now. Um, oh my god, why does she do that? Every time I try to do it for my wife, does the printer, but that's fine, don't worry. Yeah, so uh, now where did I put the thingy then? Uh, it should be under. Uh, where did I put this? Uh, oh, don't worry. That's not a big deal, sorry. If I do a mod 22, is it there? Nope, I'm not interested in that one. Right, so find uh, EVA. Yes, I'll put in the RW asset, sorry, yeah. So CD cog. I know I'd go up there somewhere. Yeah. Okay. So just so that you know, the decrypted mod is here and the decrypted EVA is here. But you've not seen, um, you know, I'm looking for something else, uh, almost there, sorry. So bear with me a second. Uh, as I said, this is not rehearsed. I'll probably forward this, uh, don't worry about it, I'll, I'll probably fast forward this maybe, but uh, I'm just looking for something actually. That's it, that's the one. Sorry to bore you guys, uh, I do apologize for taking the time. So call EVA either 2022 and then image decrypt. And yeah, that's exactly what I'm looking for. So yes, here we are. Okay, sorry, i take taken the time to remember what I've done in the, in the last week, but that is what I'm looking for. So let's just unmount this uh, Korg EVA, and I'm going to mount this now again, slash def, slash hdb1, onto my MNT CD-ROM, okay? 
So now my second drive is on the CD-ROM, okay? And I'm going to go into my directory and the year I'm working on and the image decrypt, okay? So now, as you can see, uh, I've got three or well, a few files. If you remember what we talked about earlier, if I list the contents of Korg RO, you can see the wave motion. Hope that thing is still recording. It should be. Yeah, you can see the wave motion, the EVA and the image. Uh, forget lost and found, that's an OS thing. But also, if you compare the wave motion to the my wave motion, which I underscore decrypted, you'll see the size. Uh, so that wave motion is pretty much, it looks like it's the same, but EVA, if you see that, is 3008. And the decrypted one is, uh, yeah, so they're, they're all decrypted. I can, I can guarantee that for you now. And to, um, if I wanted to mount, uh, I would, hello, set up. Loop set up. Yeah, come on. Slash dev, slash loop, zero. So we're setting up loop zero device, um, and I want that to be uh, the original mounting point. So what I'm going to do it is uh, slash mnt cd hider 2022, and then I'm going to do a image decrypt, and I'm going to do eva dot decryption dot image. So now our loop zero set up there. Let's set up also the point onto uh, loop one is going to be the waveform decryption and loop two is the final one is going to be on the mod decrypted okay so now the file I set up minus a as you can see on the system you should be able to see that. I do hope you can see that, otherwise it ruined my video if it didn't record well. But anyway, so that now is the mounting of... Now we mounted the... We didn't mount it yet, we just created a virtual device uh, to say that file now is like, a, is like a device to be mounted. So now I'm going to mount slash dev slash loop zero onto core slash... Um, it was EVA. Okay, now look at the message that comes back. Is warning, unchecked FS, recheck, blah, blah, blah. If I list the content of Korg EVA, voila. Now I can see, you can see how it's, it's all been decrypted as a complete device. So this is not a, you know, uh, the British guys are doing, well, not British guys, the guys, people are working outside my house. Anyway, uh, so now it's all decrypted. Uh, that's the EVA and we're doing the mod as well so if I do loop 2 onto the MOD and if I uh, MNT slash uh, so LSR cog slash MOD and you can see the mod the mod is actually here and uh, and if I do um, what else we have? Org RW. So we're just going to list it, and then PCM, and then wave motion. Uh, there shouldn't be something in there. Let's just let's just double check this. Uh, wave motion. Oh, it should be in Korg, so... No. Yeah, uh, what's what's going on? There should be a wave motion folder in there. Surely. Uh, so we're setting things up, loop. Anyway. Yeah. I am a little surprised. Uh, yeah, it was PCM, bloody hell. Sorry. Uh, so yeah, that 
cog RWIP, yeah, that's fine, sorry. CD cog, uh, PC, uh, RW. There's something not right, that's why, I, that's why I questioned it, because usually that wave motion shouldn't have anything inside, right? Uh, so, out of interest, I'm just going to move this stuff inside, uh, outside this thing here. So, let's just do... I'm just going to create a directory underneath it, and I'll move all the stuff in here. So now this directory is empty, so now the wave motion is empty, and that's what I want. And now if I go, mount, slash, mn, slash, nev, slash loop one uh, into call read write PCM and then wave motion and I get it there. So if I go into wave motion, sorry. Yes, I got it back. So there we go. Uh, the file systems now have all been decrypted. It looks like I actually copied it physically to this directory, but I, I Got rid of it now, uh, and now we're mounting and unmounting. So now, if I look into the mounts again, you can see the last bit. So you got Korg 0, uh, loop 0 is on EVA, loop 1 is on uh, wave motion, and loop 2 is on, is on mod. So now, we've mounted everything, and the whole thing is now available for us to load. So if I go into uh, CD into Korg, and cd into uh, read and write, no, it was a read only, so it was a module. And if I install the module, uh, and then the one I'm looking for is USB MIDI accessory, driver installed successfully, as you can see. And then the next one is the Korg uh, audio driver. It says failed, error 5, don't care, don't worry. It says underneath, registered, fine. So don't worry about that too much for now. And then, uh, in SMOD, we're going to do a SBIN. Actually, hold on. Uh, yeah, that's fine. So all map is under the SBIN directory. NKS4 module. And you can see now, uh, this stuff has found the... Um, the MKS4 module, which is basically the OMAP device we're actually working on. It's an older OMAP, but it's the same thing. And then the video module, also OMAP. And now you can see both are actually mounted nicely, happily ever after. And then you got the STGGMP. And that's just kind of thing. I haven't looked into that yet. And then finally, and this is where if you look at my, uh, sorry, Korg uh, module, uh, what's it called, OI, dot KO. Right, the minute I'm going to click in here, notice the screen. Right, so now it's loading things up. Right. Notice, starting up the Kronos is going a little faster because it's not encrypted, right? So now, all that stuff, imagine, if I did the mounting and the whole thing, of, or the, if the files are already there, um, you know, don't have to mount and unmount it, because the whole thing is kind of looped into one big hard drive, um, it should, theoretically, be a lot faster. Now. The loading process has stopped pretty much till here, till where the R is, and that's normal. Uh, it's not, uh, you know, it's not a big thing. The reason, because part of it, or the first half of it, starts the the underlay, the built-in thing that talks to the devices and part of the sound card and the VGA and display, whatever it is. Now, you go to EVA, and if I do EVA, notice here. Forget that jump is illegal, screw that. Don't worry about that too much. But notice here, now, 
The Kronos is finishing the starting procedure. And uh, yeah, so we're powering up the Kronos as you can see. Um, you know, you see the hard drive is actually pretty much loading itself now. Um, you know, it looks like it's a it's a happy happy ending for the for the Kronos. And by the way, it, it locked me out, which is fine. I could I could do things to make it not locking me out. I don't care about that right now. But what I do care about is to show you what is happening, uh, or what has been done to kind of decrypt uh, the file system. Again, this decryption bit or business is about um, what's been done, not how it's been done. Uh, just the decryption side, but. I'll jump onto, well there you go, so I'll jump into the rest of the video, or I might make it into two videos, I don't know, but uh, anyway, what I'm trying to say is, um, that is a, the starting procedure for you, uh, so, uh, what people don't really, I don't know if you, if you, if you thought about this or not, or if you guessed it or not, but anyway, the Kronos is now working, as you can see, uh, you know, all stuff is there, nothing wrong, blah blah blah. Not gonna, obviously you've seen the, the system anyway, don't, don't really, not gonna go into about this much. But, have you guys guessed it or not yet? Probably not. Um, notice the procedure we loaded the system with. Uh, when you first run the system, it will do something called loadoa.ko. And loadoa does all that stuff in the background that we just did. It 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 checks the BIOS, it checks the OS, it checks the stuff, whatever it is. It mounts the thing and it, uh, it decrypts the file system, mounts it all up, does the loop setup, and start load up the module, all the modules, and then load up with EVA eventually. And you, you don't see any of this, but this is the, a manual procedure to start up the system which is the next step or the closest step that anyone might have you know got so far towards <coughs> decrypting the whole thing so now um, the thing can start as you can see start it manually so in theory we should be able to power this up on a different um, motherboard provided that we compile the system in a way that makes the system or the Kronos likes it that's one thing what I mean by that is the you get the configuration file right, and plus you got the RTI comp compiled and set up. C you got the RTI and DBG, uh, you know, working hand in hand with the existing or the new compilation, and then D the rest of the stuff should follow suit and then work slightly fine. Notice um, there was no encryption on <laughs> this one; it's all decrypted already, and it's all working. By the way, that has nothing to do with um, decrypting a licensed file to buy uh, to play music on or, or like a wave sample or something. I'm not, I'm not into that, but this is just literally the OS itself. But this is, um, that's something I've done already in the past. What I haven't done yet is, um, or haven't talked about yet, is the ability to kind of load this all up onto a new OS. And that's what we're going towards. So. In regards to loading up the system, this is how you're loading up manually, or this is what the Oasis or the Korg. Um, I've not looked into the later modules, no, didn't really, wasn't really interested in any Korg instrument after that. So, um, uh, also just to to highlight this fact as well, what I am doing now um, is stuff I have done on my own instrument. Uh, this is <laughs> from a licensing perspective and a copywriting perspective. It's stuff I've done on my own instrument. Um, you know, and I'm entitled to that, I'm, I'm pretty sure. And also, what I have also done is not touch the 
the files uh, for Cork, I actually pretty much worked mostly on the operating system that is shipped to me by Cork to be compiled if needed. So, uh, you know, from a licensing and copyright perspective, I didn't break the law. Uh, <laughs> anyway, let's now jump into part B. Um, I'm not sure, it's been, I'm looking at the video here, it's been a 47 minutes recording and I think it's getting a little dry for people to see stuff. So what I'm going to do is I might be cutting that off into another video uh, or maybe going, going all the way. But for this bit, that's how you decrypt, or that's more, not how, that's what I've done to decrypt the file system. The next video, or the next part of the video, uh, I don't know, don't ask me yet if I decided. The next part of the video is to showing you what we're going to do on um, the debugging procedure. So actually, let's let's get, let's get on this video anyway. Sorry, rather than just making two videos, let's just do this. Yeah. So uh, now the Kronos is powered up, uh, and it's it's pretty much you need to remember this is powered up on its own in operating system. This is not my OS. This is the Korg OS, but the loading is all being decrypted uh, and it can load or theoretically should load on different OS's. So now I'm going to reboot it and jump into my, my stuff. So I hope that is, uh, is insightful. I hope you, you can see what's been done on the, uh, on the file system. So now, this is my OS, not the Korg OS. Okay? You can see it's loading up differently. I don't know if you guys can see that. It's a little bit small for the display. I do hope that HD camera catches it up because that's a progressive scan. A really good super duper camera. But it's a, it's, it's a gloomy day to be honest with you today. Uh, so, it might turn up a little grainy, but it should be fine, hopefully. Yeah. So now we're in. So, if I wanted to load up the stuff that I've done in the past in exactly the same way, I've already compiled the stuff, already compiled my OS, already compiled uh, the RTI, and we'll come through that, uh, you know, step by step. So, let's just do this a little bit, and to show you, the progress on uh, the loading procedure. Actually, I'm, I'm going to make this into a short, a short one, um, but it should give you an idea of what's going on. It might be too technical for you, but let's build me. <laughs> right. So, spin. Oh, I don't need spin. In smart, it's my own OS. Uh, user real time modules R time hal, which is the same thing, right? Scheduler, FIFOs, uh, MDBG, and notice a lot of people having problems loading the MDBG after this because that's my OS now, not the Korg OS. So I've, I've done it, I've made sure that the MDBG loads up fine, and then we have the SEM. So there we go. The RTI fully loaded, and that's a really, really good progress. Um, that's, this is what I've been doing for 2022, um, you know, last week, um, since Friday. Uh, so I now made sure that this whole thing loads up nicely, and, I, and I'm pretty much liking all this. Now the next bit is, uh, we need to load up the... Uh, SDG enabler, that's done. And notice, by the way, uh, mod and EVA, they are already not mounted, they are actually physically embedded into the system. So we don't need to mount and do all that loop crap set up because it makes the system go faster. And uh, there's no encryption, it's just the whole thing will work out fine here. So um, so we, we do in the ins mod, um, hog, arrow, uh, I can change these directories later on, that doesn't matter. Uh, mod, and then we're doing, sorry, RO, it's not RO, it's, uh, it's mod, and then it's the USB. 
MIDI accessory. Yeah. Hold on. What? Did I load up SCG enabler or not? I think I did, didn't I? Yeah, I did. STG free disk space unknown. Um, I don't remember seeing this before. STG neighbor should pick that up, surely. Let's just double check. Yeah, STG neighbor is there. So what's the problem then? So STG enabler, Sam and DVG, Fifos, Shandon Hao. Um Interesting. Okay. No worries. Mod. Uh, let's go into Cog. Yeah. The USB media accessories needing that. Um, STG get free disk space. I don't remember seeing that before, but that doesn't matter. Let's ignore that for now. That's fine. So the USB media accessories there. And now we need to spin home up NKS4 module. And here we go. Right. So what are we trying to load up in here? is the OMAP, the NKS4 module, which is the, the OMAP itself. We're trying to get that loaded into the system, but for some reason, it's not liking it. Now, um, if you can see, you've got the stuff in here. Notice these lines, this is really important. So line 970 probe found the vendor, 944, and the product 1005. This is the core product. This is the, uh, the OMAP itself, or the core OMAP, and the version, whatever it is and the probe success. So actually you can see the files, can see the driver, but uh, the new interface is, is now being registered by the USB, so that's fine. But then it says, error STG USB submit URB for interrupt X transfer is something wrong with it. So um, it looks like the URB creation of the USB is, is not really successful. And uh, that's causing the system to say, actually, hold on a minute, I'm not going to carry on loading this. I'm going to do emergency stuff, put the handbrake on, and then abort this whole thing and then exit. And uh, I think for the, for, for the last two or three days, I've been actually on this. And I'm going to take you to the interesting part, and that's going to be knocked them out from the video, uh, from, from the first one, thing in the video. Now, that to some or to many uh, means nothing. Uh, it just means it doesn't work, uh, but actually there is a chance to make it work. So if I press my uh, you know, special key, I'm now breaking into the OS to go behind the scenes. So now I have a different prompt called the KDB, which is the kernel debugger. And uh, I'll take it to slow motion of the loading procedure of what's going on into the, into the system. So. Um, the problem before I start this, the keyboard now, or the whole system, is in such a mode that uh, everything is basic, everything is, is, is very minimal, uh, you know, no network, no VGA, nothing. It's just basically you are debugging the core of the kernel and you are in the back end of it, not, not just something like a GDB or, you know, a normal debugger. This is literally, you are behind the scenes, you are debugging the the highest level device driver and because of that things like when I tap it on the keyboard I have to be extra careful and extremely easy to tap it on the keyboard and here's why if I say for example can you read this message notice the typed in uh, you know the typed in I don't know if you can see my screen in here I hope you can but you see CCAN Y double O U U. So you see the keys when you touch them, they repeat quite significantly, and because of that, actually, because it's a USB keyboard, not a PS2 keyboard, it I, I have to be extra careful because I'm working with with with, with machine code. Now, um, so if I were to start about this whole thing. Um, 
If I before let me just uh, do uh, VP do one. No, okay, hold on. No, 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 no. Let's just check this out. So graph. Yeah, do one and it's got last one on use. So yeah. So currently, so if I do this break into the system. Now, if I do put a breakpoint on do, so you see that double DO came up, do <coughs> one init call. Now the breakpoint is set up. So I'm going to release it back to the system. So now we tell the system when the process hits that do one in its call, stop there. And now you're going to load up the thing again. So now I'm going to do the ins mod in the same way again. So when I, as I do that, now I look at this. Rather than going to tell me the stuff that I did before, it's now broken uh, into halfway to say, actually, you know, you know <laughs> your wish is my command. Right, so, where are we? Uh, let's have a look. So now, we've broken into the, the thing in here, and we are actually at this, at this, uh, at this, at this point, where it's, we are about to load up the module now. So the module hasn't been loaded yet, it's just loaded to the memory, but it hasn't been run yet. <coughs> and if I do, uh, if I do, now here we go. This is the code of the module loader itself. So do when it called is doing this. It's loading up this stuff, right? And if I do trace it, so still. So I'm, as you can see, I'm tracing the module fine. I've uh, C++ support, nothing, fine. Oh, print K. Uh, God. Okay, fine. Let's just break this up onto... Where is the print K going? Print K, print K, print K. Where is it going? Print K, here we go. This is the 83, isn't it? Uh, print K on 27. 27... Hold on, what is this? Um, oh, no, sorry, yeah. Uh, beg your pardon. Do one in its call here, and then we kept tracing it, and then it called EBX, and then we jump into the init module. The init module is the bit that is actually the, the module itself. So now we are inside the, uh, the module itself. I don't want to trace the print K call, so I'm going to put a breakpoint and exit it. So now we need to look into the module itself. So now if I do uh, ID, and I'm going to look into init module. And that's the bit that loaded up my code. Where is it? Number 27. Here. So that's the print K there. If I put a breakpoint, say, uh, on here, let's say number 3B. And then jump. You can see now what's going on is the print K which is the, it's like a print, it's a, a print case to print something, but the print case is a kernel print, it's not a normal print, it's a, it's a printer for the kernel, it's like a printer but for kernel, they call it print k. Print k did this, so it says, oh my blah blah blah, line blah blah blah, enter, and this is the first thing that came up when we loaded up the module. So this is entering the module now, and if I do uh, id, uh, Keyboard, it's fine. Okay. Yeah, so now, as you can see, we are loading things bit by bit. So RT, RT requests SRQ, we'll let that go, and I'll break it by into 4C. So VP init 4C. A 
I must have. Uh, did I type in O or C there? Let's try again. VP init module for for C. Yeah, right. Okay. So what that does is now we are calling the RT request SRQ. Okay. I'm not going to jump onto. I'm not going to talk about each function what it does. But this is RT as uh, SRQ. It did something, and what that's saying is, if EAX is zero, then uh, sorry, if EAX above zero, then go somewhere else. Go to line seventy-one, which is this one. Uh, so it'll do stuff and then call STG USB register driver, and that means um, where is it gone? Uh, the let's just trace it. So SS. Actually, before I trace it, let's just do an R. So AX is now, so now this, uh, what is it called? The, where is it? The, where is it? Breakpoint, hold on, module. Yeah, so the 4C, which is this one, the call RT request SRQ, I completely forgot, sorry. It's my, I'm running half my brain, but don't worry. Um, RT request SRQ is um, run, it, it did something in the background. We're not, we don't care what it does right now because it's out of the scope of this video. I know what it is. And it came back with, uh, with a result of three. Okay? Three means something, uh, and that is a good thing for that. So, what's it going to do? It's going to carry on because it's not a. It's jumped to line 71, and then 71 is going to do stuff and it's going to print something. So, you know, it's going to register the uh, driver. Now, here is the interesting part. Um, notice this call. You remember what we talked about earlier, the SDG bit, where the SDG does stuff that is not really uh, necessary or uh, it's just kind of bypassed. This is what I meant earlier on. I'll take you through this now, but I'm just going to put a breakpoint in here at uh, that AX. So if I'm going to break module at, at 0x8a, so now we are breaking here just in case, because I'm going to go into it and then I'll, I'll run it to, to break up in here to see if AX is 0 or not. So now we'll, we'll, we'll trace. And I'm going. To, I'm now going into this call of STG USB register driver. Notice this, the function name, STG USB register driver. And if I go inside it, and then here, here is what it does. It just says, I don't care. Just go straight to the original OS USB register driver, which tells you one thing: that this whole STG crap is not re is not needed. Uh, and this is something. It's just to slow things down. I mean, why the hell are you going to do that for? So. USB register driver is actually the right function when you call STG USB register driver, as you can see now. So, um, you know, I can I can run this now and it'll go into the uh, register USB register driver. And so it's a long process, but I'm just going to run it, and then it'll stop at where the line actually told told to break in, which is the 8A uh, and init module 8A. So now you can see init modulate a broken and if I do look into sorry R AX is zero it means successful uh, it came back with a zero result and if I do stop it yeah and now because AX is zero it's gonna go into B4 which is here and that's gonna do you know set stuff so I'm just gonna carry on tracing it so went to B4 as we said, and then decrement AX, uh, you know, went into that. And now OMAP and KS4 proc initialize. So that's going to initialize the stuff for the OMAP. Let's just jump into it. Um, yeah, and that's, as you can see, the stuff that doing the registration. So you've got stuff in here and it's going to create proc entry. Um, you know, it's, it's got a lot of stuff to go through anyway. Uh, it's called the create proc entry and then it's going to do things, uh, but eventually it's going to finish that whole proc initialize and then come up with this RET to, to return to the, to the main caller. So let's just 
What's that sound? What's going on? Anyway. Yeah, so now we have the uh, registration. So this whole thing is now the procedure to do all my prop initialize, and I'm going to stop it till here. So let's just BP uh, We're going to do 5A6C 5A6C and then this is going to be 9ECD Run. So now, as you can see, it did some stuff and it came back. But what, as you can see now, is this is the driver loading up in slow motion. I um, and that's how I do things. That's how I actually trace things up and and and, and work out the encryption and do do all that kind of stuff. And. Um, I can do a little bit more on this uh, just to show you. For example, let's just load this again. It will break again. Yep, this time. Yep, edit module all the way here. Perfect. Uh, So here we go, that's the init module procedure. And if I let me just clear up all the breakpoints, it's all cleared. Right? So, uh, how I, I can pick things up and look into them before they happen. For example, this print key in here is going to print something. And if I wanted to know what that does, I can just look into the line that's going to the stack or the first of, of the stack pointer, which is for example, this one. So if I do, if I dump the memory of, uh, where is it? Let's, let's pick this print K up here. Where is it gone? Print K. So 5A70, 2A0C. 5A, print K, where is it gone? 5A70, 2A0C. Yeah, and you can see now, as before I load up and try to go here and see what that print K is going to print for me, I can actually read it in here. You can see uh, number six, OMAP and KS4 string line whatever OMAP and KS4 in it could not um, get SRQ. So this means if I if I come to that stage, there's an error there. And that's how I can actually look into things. And it's all in decrypted. There's nothing encryption, nothing encrypted in here. Um, so if I just keep looking into this, so we last time we actually reached the SDG USB driver to register. And if I keep carry on, um, it, I will reach the point of the SDG USB submit ERB, and that's the one that was failing initially. So if I breakpoint up to this one, so if I do BP. Uh, and I do um, init init module, and then where are we going to? We do in eighty five. Yep, yeah, and then jump. So see now we registered, and the driver is there. Are we on the call itself? Uh, 85. Are we in 85? Yeah, I want actually I want to call that and just bypass it. So let's just go into 8A instead. There. Okay. So what happened just there is now we are at the point of error. We're at the point of where things should stop and we need to debug. So we are looking for 
the so now we loaded the vendor ID, the product ID, and the version. Blah blah blah. That's all there, and that's successful. And that's registered the new device breakpoint there. So now we've broken at the point of failure. And that's how I fix things. That's how I actually debug things down and understand where they, where they stop. So now we are here. Yeah, so as you can see, it's going to register, it's going to clean, well, it's not cleaning up. So if AX is, is zero, it means successful. And let's see what AX is doing. AX is zero, that is successful, right? So, so far, registration the driver, registering the driver is actually successful. So, we're good there. So, trace that down, and we are now at this bit. So, B4. B4 is, we are, where are we? B4, 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 here. So, that's the point we are there. We're good. Move on, decrement, jump equal. Yeah, so proc initialize. Uh, we'll, uh, we can. I can bypass this one now. So proc initialize. Where is it going? Uh, we are on E2, right? And I'm going to stop at E7. Yeah. See that now? So that's now loaded. There. STG USB submit URB. That's another one here. And if I dump that function, if I do STG USB submit URB, it jumps straight away to the USB submit URB. And that's another function that uh, STG uh, is just kind of throwing the ball away. Um, without SCG enabler, which does that crap mapping, um, you won't be able to load up the OA or the EVA, whatever it is, um, because they need that function, and that function is actually just doing nothing but to proxy to forward that back. So in, in eventually, when you if you're going to reverse engineer and decompile the whole thing and then move on, you just you can just literally, rather than calling USB, so SDG USB submit the RB, you can just do USB submit the RB. Well, you know what, to be honest with you, you can also do that um, without having to reverse engineer and do all that kind of stuff. You can just literally patch the file itself, the OA file, you can patch it up, and then text, you, 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 just under the text, you can change the U, SDG USB submit your RB into USB submit the RB, and it will work because um, these are all uh, KA uh, allocation symbol tables. And they should just pick up whatever installed on the memory and then and map it this way. So right now, if you don't install STG enabler, it will complain, I can't load because STG USB 70 RB is not there. But um, if you pass the file up, it will it also work. So yeah, I mean this is this is the stuff um, you know I've been doing so far. So uh, come on. So we are here, and I'm going to break that down to F6. Jump. Yeah. And this is where the error is. You see now what happened? What's going on here, it just tried to register the URB, but AX came back with a minus, uh, minus uh, 6 error code, which is EA, um, what, minus, uh, sorry, minus, minus 14, I would say, no, not 6, because, uh, minus 16, I beg your pardon, uh, EA, uh, FFF minus, uh, minus uh, 16 is EA, so the code is error 16, or minus 16. And because of this error, this whole thing will not work. It will stop and give you that error. So, if I wanted to play with its brains and then just tell it actually that thing has, has was successful, to just ignore it, um, even though it's, it's quite dangerous to do that because you never know what's behind it or what relies on that function to register and which couldn't register. 
um, it will it will go further down. So if I if I do uh, Yeah, sorry, that's my uh, ML. AX0. Ah, that keyboard again. I'm just being quick. <laughs> Oh, sorry, what am I doing? I'm doing MM. Uh, no, it's 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 <laughs> it's RM, not MM. MM is memory modified. I'm not doing that, I beg your pardon. AX0. Yeah, that's it. So, sorry, I was doing MM. MM means memory modified. It should be RM, registry modified. Register modified, sorry. So now the, EA, well, I don't know. In, in KDB, they should be EAX, CBX, but they're calling it AX for some reason. Don't worry about that. It's fine. It's 32 bit anyway. Um, so now, I just told the system that that function that does the STG uh, submit URB is successful. And now let's just jump and see what happens. Look at that. So now, as you can see here, the submit, multiple blah blah blah, line error submit, blah blah blah, none blocking fails 22, OMAP communication line com check, bad response send this and receive that. It means it really is trying to talk to it, but for some reason the URBs aren't really in sync or, or aren't really matching up. And that's the topic for the next video, I think. For what for now, you can now see uh, we loading up pretty much uh, a lot of things, pretty much. We all need down about three files left to load and the whole thing will, will power up fine. But um, yeah, so this is my last video before my operation tomorrow. I'm going under the knife, surgery, and I'm going to have to trust uh, you know, the surgeon doing this operation for me. So uh, it's, a, it's a minor one, it's not a big one, so I, if I survive this, <laughs> I, should, uh, you know, I should do another video soon, hopefully, uh, and then carry on this way. But it'll, for six weeks I cannot do any, any heavy impact stuff or heavy lifting or heavy stuff or whatever it is. Uh, so uh, I think videos is something I can do, I probably will do because it's something to kill my time. So uh, anyway, I, I hope you like this video. Sorry if it's long, but uh, it's... Uh, I think it's the first time I've done this, of taking you down to the debugging of the stuff and reverse engineering it. And mind you, uh, the stuff I've done was not to break any, any files or copyrighted files. This is literally, I'm actually on the OS itself, reverse engineering the OS and nothing more. But this is just to show or to read how things work. And this, this stuff done on my own instrument. <laughs> so anyway, thank you very much for watching and have a nice, have a nice day. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll see you soon. Ciao.